When I was little, I was what could be considered a pale shell of a child, scared of my own shadow. Growing up in Florida, I had a lot to be afraid of. Weird bugs, unsettlingly large gators, tourists. I felt as if the world was a terrifying place looking to kill me at every chance it got. Part of this, I believe, had to do with a then undiagnosed combination of depression and anxiety. Because of this, I'd hate myself for being such a coward. I'd lie awake at night despising myself for not going on a roller coaster with my friends or being too afraid to go trick-or-treating. It became a cycle of cowardice and self-pity. Of course, when I walked up to the haunted mansion at Disney, the cycle would repeat itself. And this happened every time we visited the park, feeding into the horrid cycle each visit. Then one day, my mother, in a stroke of genius, walked up to me and said, Sam, how about when we get home, you can look up stuff about the ride online, so next time we come, we won't be afraid anymore. So I did. I went on to a then fledgling YouTube and started looking up footage of the ride. And honestly, I didn't really feel any different. So I kept searching. And eventually I found not just footage of the ride, but facts about it, names of the ghosts and how they came to be. I can recite the entire ride script in a heartbeat if I'm asked. I was finally ready. So next time we went, I stepped up to the queue and honestly, I was still really scared, petrified even, but I was ready. This is the moment I like to call the point of no return. A moment that would spark an undying fire within me that will never be extinguished. That day, the ride ran as it had for almost 40 years. But this ride through would not just spark an obsession, but change the world as I saw it. I could tell, even during that first ride through, that this wasn't just some dumb theme park ride. It was a labor of love meticulously crafted over years by scores of talented individuals. It showed me death and decay, but at the same time, it created a passion. It gave me life. I fell in love with how it showed me the boundless yet friendly realm of the supernatural. The first thing I said when I got off that ride was, let's do it again! And we did. We did it again, and again, and again, and again. I often wonder if my parents knew that that simple 10-minute ride had changed my life forever. The world I saw before was a frightening inferno. Knowing more about what you're afraid of takes power away from fear. The world I saw after was different. The world wasn't scary anymore. It was just misunderstood. Years would pass and eventually my obsession with the haunted mansion would only grow and change. But in that time, I'd be diagnosed with Asperger's, depression, and anxiety. The kids in school would either ignore that I existed entirely or just flat out bully me. This all came to a head in the fifth grade, when I was home with a cold. I was scrolling through Netflix and stumbled across a film simply called The Mummy. Released in 1932 and starring a man named Boris Karloff, you'd expect this movie to be about some dead guy coming back to life to take over the world, but no. The titular mummy, Imhotep, was buried alive for a forbidden love with an ancient Egyptian princess. He awakes when unearthed and disguises himself as a modern-day Egyptian in order to find his lost love and resurrect her. I fell in love with how, technically, Imhotep was an undead zombie, but he had feelings and struggles. 
as someone with Asperger's and someone who struggled with communicating, I felt seen, seeing someone else, even a fictional character, go through that same thing. For the first time, it showed me that everyone, even a 3,000-year-old walking corpse, has emotions and, and can feel loneliness. I think loneliness is a horrible thing. When you feel alone, you can forget that there are thousands of other people who feel just like you do. And I think that finding something that makes you feel less alone can change your life forever. It frustrates me that so many people will dismiss these films as old cheesy schlock. Some people claim, for them, horror is escapism, helping them, even for a moment, escape the stresses of the real world and venture forth into the unknown. Some studies have even shown that being scared during a movie can help you on later out when you're dealing with a real-life stressful situation. A few years later, my mother would barge into my room and start taking all my horror memorabilia out. All this stuff I had worked so hard to accumulate was gone within the blink of an eye. All hockey masks and action figures were no more. She thought that all this stuff would corrode my mental state. I have no idea where she got that idea. I've always been extremely kind and gentle, but at first I was angry, but then sadness overtook me. But eventually, I found out about a horror convention in Orlando. And of course, my parents declined to take me at first, but eventually my mom agreed while my brother and dad went to a basketball game. And when we got there, I was surprised to find that she actually wasn't having a bad time. She was somewhat enjoying herself. I think she realized that the people attending these events were not, in fact, deranged axe lunatics, but doctors and lawyers. It was magical. For the first time in my life, I did not feel like a freak. There's something awesome about being surrounded by people from all walks of life, all ages and ethnicities, with the same niche obsession as you. It's kind of cool to be able to walk up to someone and go, hey, what's your favorite 80s slasher? And not be looked at like a complete raving madman. The best part is the stories you'll hear from the other attendees. You'll hear about how someone met their spouse at a screening of Beetlejuice, or how they're an accountant by day, but at night they were in an extreme haunted house. A lot of the people attend these conventions in memoriam of a loved one who has since passed but introduced them to horror in the first place. When people from entirely different walks of life can come together and form friendships over something like scary movies, that's beautiful. It's ironic, really. Some of the sweetest people you'll ever meet have played some of the most vicious on-screen monsters of all time. I cannot stress enough how much I recommend attending a convention and meeting people just like you. Chances are, if it exists, there's a whole convention dedicated to celebrating it. Comics, books, movies, games, TV shows, careers, hobbies. When it comes down to it, people getting to meet each other over a shared interest is a beautiful thing. And I've picked up some pretty cool stuff because of this. I now know how to do special effects makeup and create all sorts of grotesque scars and burns out of liquid latex and putty. A skill that I've learned to treasure because it's what makes me, me. I now know that I would like to pursue a career in the entertainment industry and all because of horror, I found my purpose. I was once told by a man named Tony Todd, aka the Candyman from the 1993 film Candyman, that I'd make a great director because of the way I look at the world. So let me ask you this, how do you look at the world? Because of things like The Haunted Mansion and old horror films, 
I now see the world as a beautiful place filled with, with numerous talented, amazing individuals. Without it, I'd probably be unable to come up here and give this speech. I hope if you learn anything from my mad ramblings, it's this. Community can be found even in the most dark, most macabre depths of the earth. And even if you're not into horror, you should know, you are not alone. Thank you. Thank you.